so we're just leaving the Mercure Hotel here in Saint-Omer this is a one way here so if you stay here you've got to go this way around apparently so we've got about 270 uh, 260 miles 270 miles I think we've got to go this way pick up our route that's the hotel yeah so we're going down to uh, a town near Merzig in Germany I think we've got to go right here I've got Matt Randalls behind me and then James Webb on his Harley at the back so Might have to go a little gently for the Harley. Let's see how we go and I'll catch up with you a bit further down the road I think once we get some miles underway. Welcome back. I hope this microphone is actually working here. I just thought I'd do a quick piece here where we just jumped onto the A25 past sort of Lille um, and then we'll pick up the slower roads a bit further down. But I um, just wanted to show you, I've got the screen on maximum height and I'm doing 68 miles per hour here and um, it absolutely cocooned, it's, it's fantastic for me, I'm 5'11 uh, if you're new here so uh, it's a really good aerod aerodynamic package on this for me anyway, so that's good um, as you'll see I've put the Touratech lock onto the uh, Zumo XT in front of me I have to admit I'm going to have to put some uh, I'm going to have to put some uh, cable ties around that because over a period of time it does seem to wiggle the screen down a little bit, uh, which is annoying, but at maximum height the screen is, is fantastic. We've got this uh, mostly non-motorway route, but as it's 270 odd miles it's uh, quite a, quite a longish day anyway, so there's a few little motorway bits or a row bits to uh, keep the time moving so we just come off the motorway network and I'm now on the D934 we've got 194 miles left from here weather has improved it's now actually got some sunshine we're up to eight, 18 and a half I think let me just up my sunshade and I'll, yes 18.5 nice might even have to go to summer gloves soon don't know why this guy is going this slow through here but really comfy ride on this bike and um, the saddle seems to mold itself into your behind or your bind into the seat it must be about uh, coffee time and to uh, top up the fuel I think let's find somewhere suitable I think the um, bar to hand ratio is slightly different to my old bike because my shoulders are feeling it a bit on this bike unless I'm just not bike fit yet this year but at cruising speed you don't notice the vibes and uh, it trundles along nicely I'll catch up with you in a while I think we'll find some food A little fuel stop here in uh, wherever we are. I'll put something up on the, I can't remember the name of the town we're at, but we've got 173 miles to go. But we just uh, saw this uh, fuel stop and uh, market, supermarket, so we thought we'd pull in here. There's no um, cafe within it, unfortunately. Cause, so it's, uh, but we've got the other two important things out of the way and we'll stop and find some food a bit further on so I'll catch up with you in a while I think so we just joined the uh, 753 and as you can see we're going through this lovely wooded area here so I thought I'd show you this a little bit it's a bit of a straight road here but I think we're now getting into the more wigglies as we head further east uh, we're down to 160 miles at this point I'll just show you a few more shots of this 
before cash out with you later. Quite nicely smooth road. Hopefully my horizon stabling is coming out on the uh, Hero 10 and I've got the wide angle, um, the max lens on there. Just trying that out to see if it uh, gives a broader picture. This is more like it, but more interesting than the straight roads that uh, we were riding to get down to this point. But it does knock off the, the kilometres. Oh yeah, the other thing I was going to say was that a lot of those people who know apparently know what they're doing with these uh, Zumo XTs um, if you're into that sort of thing if you're not um, skip ahead I would think because it's going to bore you to death um, but uh, when I've, I create a route I put plenty of shaping points on it so that the route to ensure that the sat nav sticks to it I've made sure that the sat nav has got um, uh, uh, recalculation switched off so it shouldn't be able to do anything with my roots but nevertheless those people that supposedly know about these things um, a youtuber that I follow did a little segment on it and you may have seen that as well um, and when he uploads and when others upload into the Zumo they then go into the tracks feature um, find the track the track that they want, the track route that they want and you go to the spanner icon and convert it into a trip and that then gives you another, a second route in your trip planning routes folder. Now what I've done and what he suggested was put an asterisk against those that you've actually converted from a track to a route so you can identify the difference and that you should use those with the asterisk that have been converted properly. What I found yesterday was it just gives you, it does give you all the directions and what have you but it just shows you a line ahead as you can probably see on the Zumo right now. Um, but it doesn't actually show you where the shaping points or waypoints are to give you a sort of confidence that you definitely are on the correct route. So today I'm using my trip that has not been converted from a track to a route. When I imported it and it copied a version into the trip planner not a conversion it's just as as I imported it and the benefit is that as I come upon the waypoints or the shaping points they show up on screen to give you that confidence that you are actually following the route that you planned also if like me you put little notes on some of your shaping points or waypoints to say, you know, coffee stop here or viewpoint here, Photoshop stop here. Then they only display on the top of the screen here if you're doing it with the way I describe it. Do not, if you don't, sorry, I'll say that again. If you convert it from a track to a route, you seem to lose all of those waypoints, shaping points and any little text that you've added to them because that doesn't show, it just shows you a red line to follow uh, not follow, sorry, a red line on screen a red line on screen and gives you directions accordingly I hope that makes sense oh dear but I think I prefer the way I do it so I can actually add little notes onto my shaping points and waypoints as the places to visit and stop and give me that confidence I am actually I'll try and show you on screen a bit later on what I mean when I see a waypoint or shaping point coming up okay D1043 is the next one at this roundabout apparently first turn off and it says towards Charlieville, Mizier. okay catch up with you later 
Here's James and his bike. Matt. I've taken them to this, stop them at this salubrious uh, intermarche for uh, a spot of sandwich and a drink. There's a fuel stop here, but uh, we were just hungry. So that's our luncheon sorted out. And we've got uh, about 150 miles from here. So hopefully it will be a straightforward run. I'll catch up with you a bit later. A uh, short clip here of the uh, rolling Arden. We've got back onto this main road to catch up some time. The weather here doesn't look brilliant actually. We've all just stripped off our uh, underclothes because it was getting so hot. 23 degrees it says, but uh, looking a dip bit damp up ahead. Shh, catch up with you later. I've just put the GoPro back on again. I don't know if the mic's working because I took it off when it was raining and I just put the whole camera unit back on again. So I just wanted to show you this bit of countryside here. So we're sort of 91 miles to go, but uh, got a lovely little route here across countryside. We just stopped in a little petrol station back there just to uh, declobber again. It's looking better, but it could rain on us again, I suppose. That chucked it down on that main road. Had to stop there. Anyway, I want to save a bit of battery for the hotel at the end, so I'll catch up with you later on. Just thought I'd fill this little bit. Uh, we've had some cracking roads. I hope the bends don't stop down here. It's a lovely road, hardly any traffic on it. Smooth as butter. Some lovely woodland here as we approach uh, over the last three miles to the hotel. Hope I've got enough battery left on this thing. Mm, it's still showing red, so I might save a little bit until the end. It's been changeable today, and that's why I haven't really filmed a huge amount. GoPro doesn't like wet weather at all. Right, I'll save a little bit of battery for the uh, hotel approach. 0.4 of a mile, so just coming off this Mainer road. Just got to take a slip, slip road here somewhere. Here we go. Loshheim. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name of the hotel at the moment, but. Uh, Hopefully, sat nav will take me directly there. Here we go. See if there's any room for a few more bikes. There we go, that's been a long day. Right, catch up with you in the room in a minute. Not, looks like a nice hotel here. I think it backs onto the lake actually. And uh, this is the hotel room. Let me just give you a quick whiz round. We've got a balcony at the front here. So twin beds, usual thing. Um, hanging space, it's a nice clean room. Bathroom with the usual equipment in here. Basin, loo and walk-in shower cubicle. And great power, great heat, good temperature, all good stuff. So um, about 270 miles today. And uh, I was pretty tired actually after that because we left at nine and we got here about five. Tomorrow we head for Kempton in Germany. And I can't remember off the top of my head how many miles that is, but I'll I'll put it up in a uh, I'll put it up in a statement in the video anyway. Okay, catch up with you later.
and uh, we had a good meal last night. Huge portions at this uh, restaurant next door. Anyway, we're, um, we've got about 270 miles to do down to, uh, where are we going? Kempton in Germany today. So should be good. The weather's looking quite nice at the moment. Uh, it's due to be rainy later on, so probably the Black Forest is going to be a bit mucky, but we'll see how we go. I'll just show you some of the bikes before we go. Get our glorious leader on film. <laughs> These are the bikes that need a power wash. <laughs> Especially that, that old Ducati. <laughs> right, we're all heading off in different, uh, in different groups, <laughs> different directions. Well, hopefully, same rough direction, but anyway. The all right. Well, we've got uh, Matt Randalls with me. We've got Stephen Croft, who's just popped off to get some fuel. We've got this gentleman here, Eric Schmidt, who's joined us on his MV. Hi. You're guiding us, yes? Yeah. Okay, Paul, I'm anyhow. This one. That's right, perfect. Um, I probably need fuel. My reserve will come on in about 20, 30 miles. I'm well, let's, let's fill it up now. That's where one of the other guys has gone to fill up, because we did it did as we came in. And also, uh, we have Mick Lucas on his Ducati, who you would have seen on my last trip video, if you watched that. The one with all the battery problems on the Pyrenees trip. Let's get out of here without dropping it. Anyway, I'll catch up with you all along on the road, I think, is the best thing to do. So we took a few miles uh, down the uh, auto route just to get out because uh, there was not one but two routes barred as we were trying to get out from the hotel. Typical isn't it? So it messes you up to start with. So I've had to leapfrog a couple of shaping points and uh, I think I've yet to pick up the actual route but anyway we're on this D33 uh, D at the moment I think it is. I'll put it up on the screen if I'm wrong. The forecast is not great but Let's hope it's better than uh, when it, by the time we get down to Val Gardena because uh, there's been reports of snow down that way so that's the last thing we want. Because that will ruin our opportunities of going up some of the passes around there because they may well be closed. So fingers crossed anyway that they've got that wrong. So at this point in time we've got two, 253 miles to do. I'll catch up with you a bit later and show you a bit more as we head down southeast from here. We're just uh, picking up here on the A4 which is heading down towards Strasbourg. Just using this to uh, gain a little bit of uh, time on my route. It is a toll road, this one, by the way. And uh, then we're going to head off onto the more normal roads in about uh, 20 kilometres. So we're just um, scouting around the outskirts of Strasbourg. What I was saying about the flags on my routes, you can probably just about make out that there's a flag coming up in there. So it gives me that sort of confidence that we're heading in the correct direction. I've got GoPro Hero 10 problems this morning. It doesn't seem to be working with the power lead. Just put a new battery in it and that doesn't seem to be working. Quick update then, so we're uh, on the A5 I think this one is, it's going, heading towards Freudenstadt in the Black Forest. Not that we're actually going to, actually, I don't think we actually go through the town, but anyway, we're going across the sort of top of the Black Forest. So we're making good time. Um, estimated arrival at 4.30, but it won't be that obviously, as I always say, because the 
the time you had your fuels and your stops and your lunches and fiddle arsing around. All right, catch up with you in a while. This is the 28 to Freudenstadt, 153 miles TO. We're now starting to get into the lovely countryside. Unfortunately, sunshine seems to have disappeared and we've got uh, clouds above us. But let's, uh, fingers crossed, everybody. We're getting onto some more interesting roads. There's a lot of traffic. Oh, of course, it's some, uh, yeah, Sunday today. What did I expect? Lovely river down the side here. Nice little valley, this one. Just thought I'd film this pretty little town here we're going through. This is the 148 mile to go marker. Starting to climb now, we've got 900 uh, feet. Okay, so we're turning right here. Freud and Stat again. Been to the hills we go by the looks of it. See you in a minute. As we're stuck behind this caravan, I thought I'd show you a bit further up this uh, hill from where I last commented. Loads of bends, I and mean, if it wasn't for the traffic, again, it's Sunday, isn't it? Nice little road though. There's not many places where you can pick off the cars. I've only managed to take one so far. here uh, just off the bottom of the uh, B500 we took we turned left off the end of the B500 and then just uh, just down to this place here it's a nice little pub restauranty place down right on the end there very nice well, most of us have togged up in wet weather gear right let's go because it, it was raining as we pulled in, I thought, oh, here we go, good reason to stop. Oh, we've got both cams on? Yes, we've got both cams on, good heavens. Quick update, 82 miles to go. We've just stopped for a fuel and, uh, and catch a drink. Weather's eased for now. It's looking a bit heavy on the skies, eh? Been a good day and a nicer, a nicer ride today. Not so much rain as yesterday, that was horrendous. But uh, winding our way up on these nice roads here, nice and smooth. Another bit of forested area through here. We're on the 63 miles to go marker here. Lovely woodland areas around here, some great roads, not too um, trafficated. Nice roads, huh? King, but I thought I'd capture this because of the colour through here. Oh, this seems to be working still. Good on the safe battery for the other end. We're at the 51 miles to go point. Just thought this would look really colourful. That's some lovely roads to have a blast down. I didn't record it because of the... Didn't want to get a fine in the post. We're just on the uh, in the Kempton environs of Germany. Better pull over these guys because they've got quite bloody traffic lights. Not bad, a better day than yesterday. It's been a lot drier. Uh, we have had rain, quite heavy rain. It points but it wasn't as bad as yesterday at all but it's a long day we left at nine it's uh, just gone 6.15 or it's thereabouts so it's it's been a long day
the bike feels better when the weather's better, or it makes me feel better in the, when the weather's better. Or maybe I'm just gelling to it now, as I've done probably about uh, 1,200 miles on it now. So I'll close that, make it a bit easier to hear me. And then tomorrow we're off to Valgardina. Come on guys, let's get there. I just want to get on with it now. Where do we go here? Under or over? That was an awkward little junction there, wasn't there? I don't know whether you go under it or uh, around it. So we're here. Anyway, we've made it. There is a, a hotel, as you may have made out from that. There is a garage underneath here. So you can you can pay um, eight euros a space and they'll allow you to put two bikes in each space. So four euros per bike if you're that bothered. We're just gonna park ours. Out here, aren't we guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll catch up. We'll drink the eight euros. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll drink the eight euros, yeah. Okay, we'll catch up with you in a minute. Good morning. Just like give you, I just remembered I hadn't actually given you a tour of the hotel room here in Kempton. So a quick whiz round. Not a lot to show you really. Just uh, hanging wardrobe areas here, shelving. Darker than dark on a dark day. This one. Um, but it all works and uh, twin room basic facilities there is a TV that's the view out of the window from our room anyway it was so mucky last night didn't even bother to go out in the town to be honest and it's chucking it down already so we're looking forward to a uh, another rainy day we're taking the fairly direct route to Val Gardena because the Timor Yok uh, Pass is not open yet, apparently. So we're gonna go via the Brenner Pass, and I guess we'll have to go through the tunnel because the pass itself probably won't be open. There's threats of snow, so we'll see how it goes. So we've just stopped at this service station. We're about 25 kilometers down the road because it's absolutely chucking it down as we left the hotel. But we're just starting to get, I don't know if you can see in the background there, the mountain shrouded in cloud. So we're starting to get into it. Uh, we're heading towards Innsbruck and then we'll be going via the Brenner Tunnel uh, to our stop in Val Gardena because the weather in that area is meant to be horrible today. So there's no way you're gonna get any passes that are open. So uh, a little bit of a miserable day again, I'm afraid so far, but hey, it's early yet. Let's see how the rest of it goes. Catch up with me later. A dry bit of road. So we've got 149 miles remaining on this trip. I think it was 177 when we left the hotel, but it was raining and it was horrible and miserable, so I didn't bother to film any of that. But uh, we're starting to get into the mountains here as we head towards uh, Innsbruck, which is probably about another 30 or 40 miles from here. There we go, we're still going towards Reuter. Let's hope the weather is better than it's forecast in Val Gardena, otherwise it could put pay to my uh, loop rides and filming around the passes there.
What's going on there? That was three abreast. <laughs> All right, catch up with it in a little while. Other than the caravan in front of us, this is getting a bit more interesting now. We're here on the 143 miles to go marker. Just need to get past this little monkey. Might be able to enjoy it a bit more. Mix obviously not for waiting. Anyway, we've got some wigglies here. We had um, quite a wait of some traffic lights and there's uh, ambulance, police, etc. at the entrance to the Lermoose Tunnel. Um, just been through, but no evidence of what the problem was. But uh, anyway, we're on our way again. Off of wiggling our way to the front of the queue. Right, let's have a bit of fun up here. Just leaving Obsteg, O B S T E I G. Starting to get some interesting uh, views now. A bit of snow on the top there, as you can imagine. These roads are still damp though. This rain jacket, while I'm talking, I bought this from Moto Legends. Um, I'll think of the name in a minute. Not cheap but um, they're great service after three attempts we got the right uh, size to fit their sizing uh, guide was not really right I'm a 3840 and it suggested an S small to go over a rucker jacket well I had to go up two sizes to get this one to fit couldn't get the others on so I don't know what's going on with their sizing but anyway the jacket itself, great. The material's quite uh, stretchy as well. It's got loads of things. It's got a lanyard thing that goes under your crutch if you want to stop the thing flapping around it's like some of them do. It's good thickness. It's uh, got a really high neck on it, so uh, you can tuck that up under the helmet. And it keeps your neck nice and dry. I haven't had any issues with it. It's really nice. But my last one was absolutely shagged and used to flap around like hell and all the velcro had gone whereas this has got a nice zip all the way down the front of it rather than velcro so we've just taken the uh, junction for a Telfs South or Telfs Oost and we just picked up the 171 I think this one is still heading towards Innsbruck the roads are dry now lucky so far Mountains, you're never going to know what you're going to get. 14 degrees. Okay, catch up in a while. I think we're going to stop for some fuel and uh, have perhaps an early lunch. It's only 11.30. We've got uh, 100 miles to do from here. Just taking the road here to uh, Brenner and the Brenner Tunnel. I don't think the pass will be open, but we'll see what happens when we get there. It's a nudgy little junction. Sunshine and rain today. So I think we're, we're approaching the Brenner Pass, uh, we're doing the non-motorway road. Well, we think that's correct. <laughs> the total mileage is going down, so it must be the right way. It's a bit of a confusing junction back there, so we looked it up on the phone and this is the right uh, road number anyway. That was the 11 euro to toll for I don't know what yet I don't know if it's to pay ahead
Not sure what that was for. Must be to paying for this bit here, I guess. But we haven't got through the Brenner Pass yet, so uh, might have to retract that. This the, the route must go because it's the only other way. If you can't go over the Timmel's Rock, I think this is the only other way to get down to Val Gardena. Is is by the Brenner Pass or the Brenner Tunnel? Don't think you can do it any other way. So on the 182, we did our spot of lunch just off the motorway and uh, we don't know what happened. There was a bit of a confusion because we paid a toll to go over the motorway bridge and then my sat nav took me off so I must have routed this non-motorway but anyway we we ended up paying a toll to go over the bridge that we didn't really need to I think. No idea where we're going here, but we're going up into the hills, so this should be fun. The sign says, so oh, we just left Steinach. This may be a mistake, we'll have to see. <coughs> <coughs> so this is where we come out at the top of that. There's quite a few little bendies there, it's not a terribly well surfaced road, but. Uh, Getting some views up here. So I'll show you just a little bit of this before I save the battery. This is what we came for. Now what? Cracking little road, this one. As I say, uh, Matt Randalls and Stephen Cross have decided to go on the motorway. So we found this lovely road running along the valley here, as we have got 34 miles to go. Our destination. Uh, but we've just run along this valley floor and then uh, in about four miles we're picking up the autostrada again. I think it's just, I just think uh, I did it so that we just nip on and nip off where I have to. Anyway, look at the views. Dry road, we're having a bit of a ball actually down, here, down this bit. Well, we have been having a bit of a ball down this bit. Hardly any traffic on it. 18 degrees C now. So we just uh, Jumped off the uh, Autostrada. We've got 18 miles to do uh, along these local roads to Val Gardena. Lovely valley here. That's the Autostrada up above me to my left here. That was only $1.50 or $1.30 or something to come off at that point. Catch up with you in a minute. Oh, it's just on the rain now. I was just going to say, we're uh, five miles from our finishing point. I was just going to say, look at the snow on the top of the mountains ahead of us. Got elevation of, I uh, can't tell in metres actually, my old Garmin would allow me to say in metres, but this one only gives me feet, so we're just over 4,100 feet at this point, and obviously 
climbing rapidly. Hasn't been too bad. The weather forecast was rubbish for today, but uh, unfortunately it's not great for tomorrow. But let's just see how it goes. You can't tell. This was meant to be rubbish, but today was sunny and more or less okay. As we're only two miles now from the... Uh, I'll let the film roll, I think, and just see this. Do be careful on these. Aren't they? It was 50 miles and uh, 50 kilometres through there, and uh, police were pulling cars over in the middle of the village. So it's a uh, good job we were sort of balked. Otherwise, we might have been tagged as well. Look at the views here. 4,900 feet now. We thought about going for another ride uh, because it's now 10 to 4 and it's meant to be sunny for a bit. We're all a bit tired actually and that's when mistakes can happen so well, I think we're going to leave it for tonight and just see what the weather's like tomorrow. There must be a window of opportunity somewhere at some point. Look at the snow on the top of there. What height are they? <laughs> Over 5,000 feet here now. It's the ski station there for the ski lifts up to the top. I've just put um, high octane fuel in here for the first time and I think it has actually made it uh, a bit smoother. It's not quite so chuggy at uh, low RPM like that. Is that the one? Oh, it's down there. Hello. We made it. Okay. Right, catch up with you in the room, I think. So here we are in the uh, hotel. We just got to Val Gardena. And this is the hotel room, just to give you a quick idea. Loads of uh, hanging space here. Very nice. Little sofa units, etc. Even got our own balcony. Look at that. Right in the middle of uh, the town here. And the access road you saw me coming in. So a short ride to get us back up into the mountains from here. Excellent. Uh, let's have a look at the bathroom. I haven't seen this bit yet. So the light. Nicely fitted out. Shower units, all the usual equipment, but very nice. It's definitely a grade up from what we had last night. Okay, so we got here, it's about half past three, quarter to four. So it's been a good little ride. It's, weather's been good, really considering the forecast was rubbish, but um, we'll catch up a bit later on. <laughs>